Hello again, partners. I can't wait to tell you what my researcher and writer Dennis Daly has found about the earliest days of America. This report goes back farther than any of our previous ones, clear back to 1620. Of course, that was the year when the little ship, the Mayflower, landed near the present-day town of Plymouth, Massachusetts. If you ever go to the beach there, you'll see a rock protected behind a fence called Plymouth Rock. It marks the spot, so we think, where those early Puritans first set foot on North American soil. Partners, let me pause for a moment in our story to remind everyone a little about the Puritans. For most of us, they've been lost in history. The Pilgrims were a group of very religious people who came from several congregations in Europe called the Browist Separatist Movement. They had fled England where everything was in turmoil and settled in Holland. There, they were told, things would be less violent and they would be accepted. Well, they had to do something, so that's where they stopped. At one point, the Church of England threatened to cut off ties with them. Now this really worried the pilgrims because they thought of themselves as Englishmen, but now if they couldn't practice their faith in Holland and then if they had no religious identity, people might think they weren't even English at all. And they thought, no way, we can't do this. We've got to prove that we're English. Then their leadership came up with an idea. Since they were outcasts in England, why not go as far away as they could and still stay on British soil? They arranged with the English investors to establish a new colony in North America in 1620 and became the second successful English settlement. Remember now, Jamestown had been set up in Virginia about 15 years earlier. <laughs> so, Jimmy, that's, that's a great history lesson, but where is this week's story going? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's a common question you always come in with. And so, you see, it's necessary to explain the Puritans. Much of our early history is based on the pilgrims' beliefs and ideas. Oh, by the way, during the worst of the weather crossing the sea, a child was born. She was named Oceanus Hopkins. Sadly, she only lived to the age of six. Okay, now, let's go forward. The pilgrims had landed on Plymouth Rock. They had sighted land on the 9th of November. Now, partners, if you've ever been to the rocky coast of Massachusetts, you can picture what a rude awakening the pilgrims got. They had already braved heavy seas and at one point had seen a big beam in the Mayflower ship nearly break in half. Only their prayers had saved them. Now they were on dry land, but they had arrived in early winter and the winter of 1620 was a really tough one. They quickly built a wall around their tiny huts. Every night, they prayed that God would help them get through the worsening winter. Then, one day, there was a knock at the gate. Standing at that gate was the last surviving member of his Native American tribe, the Pawtusket tribe, P-A-W-T-U-S, I mean, or T-U-S, uh, excuse me, no, here it is, the Pawtusket tribe, P-A-W-T-U-X-E-T-T -T -T tribe. At first, you can imagine the pilgrims were skeptical, but during the next two years, this young man whose name was Squanto found ways to explain to the pilgrims what they must do to survive the harsh weather. Squanto also talked to other tribes in the area. He became known 
As a real peacemaker, Squanto ended up living with the pilgrims for nearly two years. He taught the European immigrants how to hunt animals that had great fur so they could keep warm. He even showed the pilgrims how to sow and fertilize native crops. Squanto literally saved their lives. You see, the seeds that the pilgrims had brought from Europe were not hardy enough to survive the weather in Massachusetts. So Squanto gave them seeds for crops that would survive. Native American seeds. Now friends, the reason Squanto did not stay longer with the pilgrims is that he died. We think he died from what they used to call milk fever. So Jimmy, a Native American makes friends with the pilgrims and in many ways saved their lives. That's a sweet story, but you call this report another of America's early miracles. What is this miracle? Okay, here it is. I mentioned that Squanto one day knocked on the gate of the Plymouth Colony. I did not mention that he greeted the pilgrims with the words, Hello, my name is Squanto. You see, out of the millions of Native Americans who might have discovered the first pilgrim colony, this one could speak English. Wow. You see, many years earlier, Squanto had been kidnapped and taken to England as a slave by the man who captured him. While he was there in England, he learned English. Then he escaped and went back to Massachusetts. <laughs> I can only imagine the smiles on the faces of the pilgrims when this unknown young Native American Indian walked up to the gate and said, Hello, my name is Squanto. Partners, stories like that restore my faith in the power of prayer. Okay, you know the drill. Dennis has ended our story right here for this week, but in my mind, I think he'll come back and bring more stories down the road about the early Americans and the adventures of how they learned to sow and, well, everything, just to live, in fact, growing crops before Squanto showed up. Look up there. See those three boxes, the one over to the right farthest, has that red X. Click it, and you'll come right straight back here to my report page. It's magic. Hey, listen. I don't know where we're going to go next week, but whatever it is, Dennis has something waiting for us. And I love you, so let's wait and see what will happen. Go get them, tigers!